Hello fashion friends and family, this is Stacy here from So Bromo, Mason Elsa Fitzgerald and the Fashion Heritage Digital Trades Foundation. We are on location here at the Fashion Innovation Hub, but I've actually set up a little oasis corner um, just because I feel like I'm running between different locations, working on different projects, and I really need to kind of like a little nook to be able to work on our next steps. So brought a little bit of a jungle here with me, um, but I will be working on our next um, application for the TEDCO grant. So this is the Makerspace grant. That's what we've been like preparing for doing this feasibility study to see if we really can truly activate the needle trades via, via the uh, entrepreneurs, the needle trades veterans, bringing the community in, doing these tours, um, helping our ventures do um, crowdfunding campaigns, uh, beta testing new prototypes with, you know, for example, Susan Clayton from White Paws Run Mitts. Um, so a lot of it is really showing proof of concept and we're really excited. A lot of people are reaching out, wanting to connect, support, um, but we're really focused on staying laser focused. So we're implementing on that original grant deliverables. Um, we recently had a tour with the Maryland Makerspace Association that was formed, I believe, during this time um, when the, these makerspaces have activated, um, led very much so by Will from OpenWorks. And I wasn't able to attend that because I was at the MICA Upstar Venture Competition where I'm the director of the Entrepreneurship Center there. So Nicole Meyerick was really kind and wonderful to attend on our behalf. Um, so anyway, I am gonna get started. We're applying for two opportunities. We're applying for the TEDCO Maker new Makerspace grant. And um, we are also applying for the Radcliffe Foundation um, request for proposals, both of which are due around a similar time. Uh, we've also heard about another really exciting opportunity that is out of uh, an organization in New York that really focuses on the needle trade. So I'll be working with our board of director, um, Anita Jones, um, but also we'll be working with Sally DeMarco, um, who is a, an amazing legend of the needle trades here in Baltimore. We will be working on applying for a public art piece to be created um, around the needle trade. So celebrate and honor that because New York has um, the gentleman on the treadle sewing machine. It would be really wonderful if Baltimore had something to really honor and translate the past, present, and future of industry in art form. All right, well, I'm gonna get to work and I will um, take you along a little bit of the rest of the day with me, okay? Hey, Mr. Hardy. Color, I ordered purple, orange. Hey, Pat. We're all here. Oh, <laughs> Mr. Mr. Hardy has a special coffee luwak. Yes, oh. and he's got the poop coffee. <laughs> and then we've got Mr. Hardy. So kind to get our irons up. And then we've got Susan and Nicole. Yeah, I was thinking like red is gonna be good. If they have like a bright blue, that might be good. I thought about that too, and I almost thought about blue this year. Orange, because like everyone's oh, yeah. asking for orange now. Like, because I wore them to the baseball game. Oh yeah, I saw oh, the orange. Right. And and now everyone's like, if you have orange, yeah. purple and orange, yeah, yeah. that'd do so well. I was and everybody yeah. was. Like, I was at opening day, and they were like, "Are you gonna do purple again?" I was like, "Well, purple didn't really do that one." So I think I need to push it more, but I'm. So we're doing the photo shoot for the new space for our courses. This is for the product development class. And the original shot was taken in the Baltimore Museum of Industry in a museum, but now we're doing it in a living and breathing space. Yay! We've got the Icosa collection. We just finished the shoot for the classes. Well, we finished a great day of photographing, not of our running in the collection necessarily, but mostly focused on our upcoming courses, our fashion school intensive. We have that class. It's an intensive weekend happening next weekend. We have some other courses that are running through that we're excited to share along with some master classes. Um, but I think that the um, part that I'm really excited to share with you guys is um, it hasn't been activated just yet, but a lot of research around 
a combination of the arts and crafts and trades and translating that for the modern age. What does that mean? Um, and for me, it, I realize I'm not just looking at garment factories and uh, old world methods within like ateliers and workrooms, um, but I've been reading a lot about, and I, already, um, kn I know about William Morris, but in particular around the arts and crafts movement and this sort of dilemma between the maker being the sole person creating it um, to the kind of scalability of that from like the entrepreneurial lens and so we are not in a hurry to produce um, anything um, that is not of quality that is not paying a living wage um, and so we're going to sort of do this combination of testing the market helping our entrepreneurs but also something I realized with our last tour was that we were meeting people who have stopped connecting to fashion into their making process because they didn't see the commercial viability of it. They didn't see that there was a job on the other side of it. So I think there's a really important piece of the puzzle that we're working through now that is celebrating and honoring a space that builds community around the creating process, the sewing culture, um, that does not always necessarily equate into the mass production or the monetization of a good. Like there is good and joy within the heritage elements and just um, having fun, having fun in that, that, that environment that um, we're sort of missing with the, the speed of um, the world that we are in now. But I do hope that um, with this research, this kind of look into the past and in the future of the sector, that we can look at it beyond the industrial elements of production. All right, well, thank you so much for joining us. And um, I hope that you continue to embark on your amazing journey and dreams um, and letting them um, take their own path. And that I think is the, the spirit of entrepreneurial progression is to allow your passions to iterate and to become let allow the idea to become what it's meant to be in the world all right well we look forward to seeing you next time bye